Board meeting to order, City of Riverbank Planning Commission meeting of May 15, 2018. We have a roll call, please. Chair Dinan? Here. Vice Chair Ball? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Hughes? Here. And Commissioner Famich? Here. Thank you. Oh, and in the audience we have Commissioner Link. Okay. <laughs> conflict of interest. Any planning commission member or staff who has a direct conflict of interest on any scheduled agenda item to be considered is to declare their conflict at this time. Hearing none, public comment. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission Board. Individual comments will be limited to a maximum of five minutes per person, and each person may speak once during this time. Time cannot be yielded to another person. Under state law, matters presented during the public comment period cannot be discussed or acted upon. For record purposes, please state your name and city of residence, and please make your comments directly to the Planning Commission Board. Do you have any public comments at this time? Fred Schmidt was a smart, adventuresome boy with a sweet smile who excelled in baseball and golf. He was on the golf terms of Davis High School and Modesto Junior College. But he went, he went got to lose his way when he started using drugs in high school and never found his way back. He had a bright future. Let's say Jim Smith, Gary's father, he got into Cal Poly, but the last eight to 10 years of his life, he had trouble with his addiction. Cynthia Schmidt, Garrett's mother, said that many years of drug addiction transformed Garrett into someone and something unrecognizable to us. There was no getting him back. Jason Helen met Garrett Schmidt. By the way, uh, Jason Helen's mom is running for Congress, and uh, I met her here at the church last, last week or so. Um, and she says it's true, she knew the man. Uh, Jason Helen met uh, Garrett Schmidt in kindergarten, and the two were best friends through junior high school. I've gone on to have a successful career, and he was on the same path. So I didn't say, he was super smart. You will never imagine that this is the way it will turn out. It's changed how I look at homeless people on the street, I think. That could be Garrett. The Schmitz sued Modesto in October 2017 in federal court in Fresno. A police chief, Colin Carroll, said, that well before the lawsuit, he met with Jim Smith and another family member for about two hours and showed them body camera footage. He said, I think they also met with the family. Understand it's hurtful and painful to lose a son, he said. We're not hiding anything. But Jim Smith said the family did not get the full picture and all their questions answered until after the suit. After they sue it, excuse me. 
Blake Law is a land attorney for the city in the lawsuit said Modesto offered to settle to the family and the city could put this matter behind them and to avoid the enormous expense that would have been necessary to defend and vindicate the officer's trial. Lawyer said that he did something he normally does not do in an attempt to bring about a quick resolution. He offered to let the Schmitz and their attorney review all of the evidence, including the body camera footage and police and autopsy reports well before the city was required to provide it. That took place about a month ago. He then followed up with the city's settlement offer. The Schmitz accepted the settlement a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Josh last week dismissed the lawsuit. The settlement states the city also will pay the parents' legal costs, which have not yet been determined, which had not been determined. Lawyers declined to release Modesto's legal costs until the matter is fully resolved. The Schmitz needed to view that video and the reports to be satisfied that they could leave the whole issue behind them as parents, say Panos Lagos, the attorney who represented the Schmitz. Got Lagos seconds say, left, sir. The, the thing is, uh, the reason why I'm reading this is because he started with marijuana in uh, high school with this uh, of his friend. And uh, we don't understand, and um, we, I say, uh, the churches of France of Rome at the community center, at places that we gather. And uh, it is becoming. Are up, sir. Oh. Thank you for your input. Okay, I'll, I'll continue next time. Thank you. Because there is a lot of this that is not right. Colombia cartel started that way, paying the soccer teams for Colombia with parts of the marijuana and cocaine and things that go Thank from you. the money. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll go to the consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are to be acted upon by a single action of the Planning Commission Board unless otherwise requested by an individual Planning Commission member for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by roll call vote. Do any commissioners have any desire to have an item pulled from the, plan, the consent calendar? Item 2.1, posting of the agenda. The agenda for the May 15th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting was posted on the City Community Center Bulletin Board, City Hall North and South Bulletin Board, Post Office, City Website, and email to the library on May 10th, 2018. Item 2.2, approval of the agenda. This provides an opportunity for the Planning Commission or staff to recommend that an item be placed on the agenda for discussion or to adjust the proposed, agen proposed agenda to allow an item to be taken out of order. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Got a vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Public hearing presentation, item 3.1, zoning ordinance amendment number 2018-01. The project consists of an amendment to title 15, land usage, chapter 153, single family residential district R1, concerning skate ramps and residential yard. The amendment to the city of Riverbank municipal code is exempt from environmental review because it is not a project within the meaning of section 15378 of the state CEQA guidelines. Donna, would you like to take over? Sure. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. As the Chair mentioned, this is a zoning ordinance amendment, and it's just something that has actually come before the Planning Commission uh, several times now. 
So in September 2017, we brought forward and um, staff brought forward an ordinance, ordinance uh, was a series of amendments uh, to update the residential code sections. And part of that included the skate ramps and residential yards, a way to regulate them through a CUP. And while the ma a majority of the amendments were recommended to the city council for approval, the language for skate ramps was pulled in order to continue the, the discussion. So on March 20th, the Planning Commission discussed the matter further. Uh, we talked about uh, the different choices that you had. For example, uh, we discussed uh, a conditional use permit and how that would work. We discussed an outright ban on skate ramps. And we also talked about uh, whether or not it was appropriate to regulate skate ramps and backyards. So there, there was an option as well to uh, not do anything. In the end, after we'd taken public comment and there was discussion among the planning commissioners, it was decided that uh, regulating the skate ramps through setbacks and height limits might be a, a more appropriate uh, path to follow. So staff did prepare uh, the staff report for uh, the city council meeting and in staff and well, actually upper management and the uh, city attorney's office reviewing the documents, it was determined that the decision to do the setbacks and height limits was actually reached after we did public comment. So at that point, we probably should have reopened public comment and let anybody in the audience talk about setbacks and height limits and then close public comment and vote on it. So um, it was determined that this item should come back to you just to clarify that this is the route that you wanna take and to open it up to the public to get their public comment before I take it back to the city council. Uh, so the language that um, I had proposed, um, you know, following your thought on the setbacks and the height restrictions, uh, discussed half pipes um, and then, as you see at the bottom, in no case shall any portion of the half pipe exceed six feet in height above ground level, excluding the handrails. So if somebody wanted a, a taller one, eight feet, they could actually dig down into their backyard about two feet. So in the end, the ledge that the skater stands on would still um, be a maximum of six feet. As far as setbacks go, um, I provided a description of what a half pipe was, so people, you know, make sure that was understood. Um, and then also added in that a minimum of 12 feet from other structures, lot coverage, excuse me, it's side and rear setbacks, a minimum of 12 feet. So um, what you had before you in your um, packets uh, with the staff report is the draft language, um, both the ordinance plus the excerpts that were underlined. Um, so those are the additions to that section. Um, this does meet uh, the general plan's overarching goal for the environment. Um, it's to ensure that noise does not reduce the quality of life um, in our city. Um, as we had mentioned um, in the title, uh, that this proposed amendment is not a project within the meaning of CEQA, so you won't be asked to approve any CEQA documents tonight. So what staff is looking for is for you to uh, reopen the public comment and then provide staff with direction that is this truly the direction that you wanna go and then I will prepare the documents um, and take them to the next city council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Are there any public comments on this issue? Hearing none, is there anything the commissioners have to add or questions they wanna ask? Since, oh, I'm sorry, go since ahead. we did open public comment, um, I would like to mention that the city has received um, a second letter uh, the first letter you'd gotten uh, at the last meeting, and um, in fact, the authors of that letter had actually gotten up and spoken. spoken. Um, so this letter is uh, from another neighbor, and they are just reinforcing the first neighbor's position that they've kind of been sitting back and, and watching this happen. They, they like both sets of neighbors, 
Um, but unfortunately, they do see some of the same problems that the original complainants had seen. And so they're supporting that first neighbor's position. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Robert? I had a question in the, in the draft and on the highlight um, on section three talks about uh, setbacks a minimum of 12 feet from other structures. In the draft, it says 12 feet from property lines. Is that inclusive? It should be 12 feet from property lines and six feet um, per fire department regulations from other structures. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Mallory, you have any? So entertain a motion to one sec. So what we're what we're actually doing now is we are go we're opening up for public comment to go back to make a selection of multiple options. This is this was just a clarification of one of the options. So after public comment we'll come back and choose <coughs> one of multiple options again. Uh, that is an option. Um, I had assumed that you would just provide staff direction on the setbacks and height that you wanted to continue in that vein. But if you would like to discuss those other options again, um, as long as we have public comment, I believe that's acceptable. My understanding was that this was strictly an approval of this option because this is only sent to the city council. Mm -hmm. and we didn't open this it up. This is just a recommendation, correct? To correct, to the recommendation the to the city council. There was one question I had just from the letter, something caught my attention, was whether or not we knew that it was true um, that any neighbor to the skate ramp will have to disclose this to any potential buyers of their homes, that there's a skate ramp next door. The three um, realtors that I have spoken to um, have all agreed that it is something that needs to be disclosed. Okay. And is there language within the general plan to the effect of like protecting someone's property values? No, I don't believe there's anything in there about property values. Any other comments or questions from the commission? We had a motion to approve the recommendation that staff has proposed. Thank you. Thank you. I move to recommend to City Council the approving of zoning ordinance amendment number 2018-01. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Roll call vote, please. Chair Bowman? Yes. Vice Chair Ball? My vote is no. Uh, the city offers a, a, a skating opportunity, and I think that the negative impact this causes to other residents is significant. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. And Commissioner Fenrich? Yes. And that passes for one. Thank you. Thank you. The Planning Commission workshop presentation. Do we have any? It says no on here, so I guess there's no presentation. No, not today. Planning Commission comments. Melissa? I guess one thing that um, I was wondering is it's come to my attention that Riverbank doesn't allow food trucks. Would that be something we could potentially look at? Or is there an avenue to look at that? Or is there a reason? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anything along those lines. Um, at this point in time, the city does allow food trucks as long as you have a license and you don't, a business license, and you don't stop for more than, was it? 15 minutes <laughs> in one location, you have to keep moving around the city. Okay. We don't have anything that allows like a, a permanent parking space for them. I have been asked to look into that by the city manager, um, and it is on my list. We are, we are getting there. Um, in fact, I did call, um, I can't recall the name of the company right now, but it is a company that every Monday in Hayward, um, there's six or seven trucks that come around the downtown where City Hall is, and they have music and they have, um, <coughs> excuse me, different vendors, but they also have six different trucks each time that has maybe French food and Vietnamese food and Mexican food. And so it is something that we would like to look into to bring to Riverbank, uh, possibly something similar or at least um, a permanent location. 
so it's it's on the radar. I hope the they'll, I'll be able to share something with you soon on that. Sounds good. Al along those lines, where did the 15 mm -hmm. minutes derive from? Every time I've gone to a food yeah. truck, I've waited longer than 15 minutes for my food because there's such you a hit. Get this tape after this. <laughs> I think caravan <laughs> going through town. He just circles the block until your food's ready. <laughs> this makes sense because that way it's not loitering. It's active movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know. Um, we actually haven't had anybody ask about it or pursue it, or as far as I know, nobody's doing it in town right now. I'll second your request <coughs> into it. <laughs> I think I think Riverbank could, could greatly benefit from oh, yeah. some entertainment downtown. Yeah. Not right now, it's a just a minute. Okay, it moved higher up my lips. <laughs> <laughs> you can put Thank your you hand down, I'll recognize it for you. Yeah. You can put your hand down, I'll recognize it. I don't get tired of it. It's just like you announce something in the little one news right. and you didn't even try the, the, the If you want to hold your hand up, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Up to you. Joan, you have any comments? Well, <laughs> talking about property values, I know that I've mentioned this before, but I really think that we need to do something about all the unkempt yards in our city. And that really, really affects property values. Certainly we can come up with some sort of a written code that somebody can enforce. Well, we do have a written code. It's just tough to have the one code enforcement officer being out there doing it all. Uh, but I do have an item coming to the city council this next meeting to um, hire a second code enforcement officer. That person, um, we're intending to um, do the ADA, which is abandoned vehicle program. Uh, we can actually get some money from the county through some grants uh, for every vehicle we abate. Um, so the person would handle those in the morning, for example, and then in the afternoon work on the cannabis permits um, that the city is processing. So that would free our current code enforcement officer up to do more of the weed abatement, the yard abatements, and the, uh, the calls that come in every day on a variety of different type of abatement issues. That's great, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mallory. Um, no, I don't have any comments today. Robert? Nope, off of mine. I just wanted to comment on the one-on-one -on -one meeting I had with Mayor O'Brien. I guess all of us had the same. One of the issues he brought up that I wasn't aware of until our meeting was the extension of Cross Road down through Ceres to pick up 99 as an alternate to Mitchell Road or Grove Landing or all those different things. I thought that hmm. was pretty neat. Yeah. I have a colleague in the sheriff's department that is on the serious planning commission who has also been aware of this project and the only mention he had was the folks on faith home road are again it so i thought i'd just put that in the minute <coughs> county referral any correspondence information i mean you've got an item here the stanislaw county planning commission workshop update Yes, because of scheduling with the speakers and the staff, uh, you know, planning director workloads, the um, workshop this year will be held on Saturday, September 15th. Um, it's normally held from nine to noon. Um, it's a minimal cost of about $35 each and planning, uh, uh, the planning department picks that up for you. So it's not a cost, it's out of your pocket. And so as we have more details, uh, I will be sharing that with you. Thank you. <coughs> Are there any other staff comments? Yes. Um, first, um, I did not have any items to discuss at the last two council meetings. I was out of town on vacation for two weeks. So the meeting before and the meeting after, I just kept clear on my schedule. Um, we do need to talk about <coughs> one housekeeping matter as far as your business cards go. So I'm going to go ahead and let Janet discuss that. Okay, so I need to find out what you all want to have on the business card. If you want your personal emails or phone numbers or addresses, we have the form that you have to fill out. Or you could just use your city email and the city's phone number and the city's address. So it's up to you. I just need to know which way you want to go on that. And then if you want any personal information, you'd have to fill out a form. 
far as I'm concerned, the city information is all that I need. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll get those ordered then. Thank you. Anything else? Sir, I'll give you an extra minute. Okay. How about a minute and a half? Do you? No, a minute. Let, let, me try, a minute. let me try this part, okay? I have the Riverbank newspaper from uh, Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. It has a public hearing notice. It's a public notice, City of Riverbank notice a public hearing notice is hereby given. That the City of Riverbank Planning Commission is you, right? Is all of you? That's okay, right. good. I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, conduct a special public hearing to consider the project described below at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, May 15, 2018 in Council Chamber 6707, 3rd Street, Riverbank, California. Project descriptions, conditional use permit number 01, 2018, Riverbank Canary, building number five. The project consists of a conditional use permit to permit a commercial cannabis activity in building number five. Nothing in this agenda says about that, and you are not discussing anything. You're about to close that the meeting without even discussing this. That was pulled from the agenda, sir. Right now, it's not on the agenda, and that's all we can when? say. When? It will be, if it's placed back on the agenda, it will be posted again. In the when was it pulled out from the agenda? I don't have the exact date, but it was. Any of you? Because this is no good. Why? This is no good to put a public. I'm sorry? It was posted on the website and the board on May 9th or May 10th that it was canceled on the public notice. This one has to go into the newspaper, man. As he was for right, two hold weeks on, hold on. ahead. Please address, address the Okay, I'm, I'm addressing all of you that uh, when you make an agenda, you make sure you include what you have in the newspaper notice. Otherwise, you are contradicting yourself and it becomes a lie. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize to call that, but that's what it becomes, a lie. Uh, sir, it's not a lie. I understand your concerns that if it shows up in the newspaper or if it's posted and subsequently it is canceled or pulled from the agenda, that if it causes inconvenience, it shouldn't. But it is not a lie. So wait a minute, sir. Okay? And sir, if you want to come up and address the commission. When and why? When was that pulled from the agenda for tonight? You say tonight? I can go to the post office. They don't lock the doors at 7 o'clock. And I'll, well, I can't get into it. I can go take a picture of it with my phone. It shows May the 15th, 2018, 6 o'clock tonight. And I can be back here within 5, 10 minutes. It, uh, it's it, there. It, it was right outside there. Uh, this morning, and now it's gone. That's why I got up and walked out, because I seen what was happening here. And so mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. Annabelle came out and pulled it down right before the meeting or one of the others. It was there. Okay. I the double checked. The commission has heard both your concerns. The staff has heard both your concerns. We appreciate the input, and we'll try and uh, make things This is the second the time. This is the second time you did it. The second time you did it. Why? You can sit there and laugh all you want to, Janice Marlin, but it's the second time you did it. It's supposed to happen last week. It didn't happen. We're it's supposed it. to happen we're this week. It didn't happen. We're starting to lose parliamentary authority here. We hear your concerns. They will be addressed. And if you wish to show up at the next commission meeting, we may have more information for you. How's that sound? <laughs> you know why it's like this, sir? You know, uh, you the know last time it came before... the lack of assistance mm -hmm. to the people because... You contradict yourself and then go to the city council meeting and they contradict themselves and everything becomes a lie because they, all of these people that came before, they were, I counted 18 to 20 people and they were concerned about that main thing of marijuana not using for medical purposes only. That's how they sneak it in yeah. and now it's for recreation. Well, you know what? It becomes synthetic cocaine and it becomes synthetic in other drugs that are harder drugs because the high or the marijuana doesn't freeze anymore. I have an experience in that. Thank God I cut it off years ago. But in Vietnam, I got hooked. 
Okay, I, I hear your concerns. So, and so I know about this man. I hear your concerns. It is. By the police. Please so don't. I, please don't call it a lie. Hmm? It, please don't call it a lie. Nobody was lying. Well, but show me that it's not a lie. The agenda was changed. If it did not get out to the public, we'll address that issue. And why? That's what I want to know. If when was it changed? So it, it was not anything. Tonight. With all due respect, the with all due respect, this the, this is the the general. This is the time. These comments should have been made during the general comment period. We've received your comments. Staff has received your comments, and so the, this this comment period is over. Okay. Your comments have been received. I know Thank why you. it should have been canceled, but uh, I didn't think it was going to be. It should have been canceled okay, because sir, the people were notified heard, before had to be notified counsel, again. Counsel, the issue is closed. Thank you for your input, both of you. Thank you. It isn't going to matter. You know, you're going to pass it anyway. You're going to blow it right through the council, and they're going to pass your it. Input, but gentlemen. anyway, Thank appreciate you very much it. For listening. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for your input. Any other business before the commission? Hearing none. Meeting is adjourned. I'd like to clarify the May the special council meeting was in the paper and posted that got canceled this meeting for it to be on tonight was never posted in the paper because it was already canceled before the public noticing we didn't even public notice it because if the special meeting didn't happen this meeting wasn't going to happen this there item. was this item there was two different items going the one that was going for the special meeting was for the development agreement the meeting that was going to be on tonight's meeting was supposed to be for the conditional use permit because the other one didn't go, we never even posted the public notice for this one because that one didn't even happen. So it wasn't even, they're confusing the special meeting that was canceled. Well, uh, yeah, and I, I believe, and I'm, this is just conversation, the meeting is adjourned. As a matter of fact, we probably shouldn't be having this conversation if the meeting's been adjourned. But thank you, Janet.